Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor and M&T Bank Stadium here in Baltimore, Maryland. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line with the Cleveland Browns. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses, because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways, because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for them on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And then you know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> and at the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? On third down, Jackson. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. What well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Well, thinking about what the Cleveland Browns have been able to do this year, I guess not many places, not many franchises, if you're fighting around 500, would you be saying, hey, this is a giant leap forward, but this is a giant leap forward this year for Cleveland. After years and years and years of false starts, it is a huge leap forward. And not only are they on the right track now, because they've got coaching, working with administration, with the players playing well, they're not only taking a big step forward, they're still in the playoff line. <laughs> Think about that for the Cleveland Browns in 2018. After the last three years winning a combined four football games. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. They go with Chubb on second down. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers of reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. On third down, Mayfield. Side here, and that's complete. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. So first and 10 now from the 30. A first down throw for Mayfield. That is caught by the former Gator, Antonio Callaway. Give him nine there on the first down completion. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Mayfield looks to throw. 
And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Here we go now. Boom, there Mayfield with it once more. He's got an open man. He completes it to Callaway. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Busting through contact. Just wasn't a huge hole there for him to operate. Stopped just inside the 35-yard line. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Mayfield off the play fake. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Throwing Mayfield. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down. Threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. The return man, Chris Moore. Did a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Baltimore's offense coming back onto the field, and for the Ravens, Charles, it's really no question that the season sort of changed when Lamar Jackson was put in at quarterback. He ran off four wins in his first five starts, the only loss in that stretch overtime at Kansas City, and he really gave him life, didn't he? He certainly did, and give credit to the Baltimore Ravens staff led by head coach John Harbaugh to not only make the change, but institute the type of offense that would give him a chance to be successful. Heavy run based. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down right, the score, go. they Boom come out firing it. right away Boom and compound it. things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. And they'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. All right, here we go. Green! Second down, Mayfield. And Callaway taking it in left side. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. All right, here we go. A 
first carry now. This is Johnson. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. Mayfield now on second down. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. We really didn't have any doubt that he was going to be one of the top-rated rookies coming into the league, especially as a runner. And he's given us no reason to change our minds. That's a big-time run, and the production that he showed us in college is translating very well into the National Football League. From the red zone now, Mayfield escapes the sack. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. You know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Set, lead, Mayfield on third and two. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. These guys had to settle for a field goal their last time moving the ball down the field. They may have to do it again on this drive. That could be frustrating. Yeah, I don't want to be cliche, but at least they were able to get three last time. Three here, not the worst thing in the world. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that'll make it 6 0 here in the first. So scores on their first two possessions, but 6 0. So field goals, probably not what they were hoping for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now, but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Now Jones. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try to move the football. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. 
Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Here we go now. Boom, nice. Now Jackson on second down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Brown. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at it, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Four down, four down. Now let's go! Now they try the right side here. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. Second quarter now, Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They've got it second and six to start things out. Here we go now. Green. Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. A great move by Montgomery. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now let's go, 319. They go play action here on first down. And he's gonna drop this off to his fullback. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Four yards on the pickup, and it's a second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Play action. It's Jackson. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. First target, first catch, and a first down. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This quarterback now rebounding nicely after the interception. He's hit four straight to start the drive. It's first down. Here we go now. And they'll go on the ground. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It'll be a gain of 11, and that'll make it third and one. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. It's a game of three, and it gets him the first. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Here we go now. Boom, nine. And now Jackson will look to throw it. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. And that'll bring up second down. 
When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Hurry up, here we go. Three. From the gun, it's Jackson. Caught by Steed over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Here we go now. 3 19. On third and one, Jackson. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And they are on the board, trailing now at 6-3. to three. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three right, points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. To the right side and complete to Njoku. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now a second down throw for Mayfield. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The Browns on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. All right, here we go. Three, they run again on first down, Chubb. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, that was not a highlight play for the offense. But how about the previous play? A big run? They're used to trading that, especially if you're a Hall of Fame runner. Big run, maybe not so much on the next one, but the big ones add up over time. Hurry up, here we go. A give. This is Chubb. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. 
I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And he's got this one complete to Callaway. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move. And they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. From the gun, Mayfield. Throw left side complete. It's Higgins. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. This quarterback now 11 to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield over the middle here to Brown. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. That throw good for four. It's second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Charge the ball free and brings up third down. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it. Could not hold on through the end of the play. A third field goal of the first half. Not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. All right, here we go. On third down, Mayfield. He's got his tight end in Joku. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end could be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. Chubb, and he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Good first step there defensively, but they're still knocking on the doorstep, so maybe another run here? I think so. One of my favorite coaches just say, son, if you could darn near lay down near the end zone and get in, <laughs> give me my best power running play with my best back right, right now. Go. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Antonio Callaway, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns add on to their lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did... Speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well.
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Jackson now on second and 10. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Montgomery. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Give him nine on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. Jackson from the shotgun, and that is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. <laughs> Dances by him. Shifts by Now a hit and a loose football. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. And maybe getting a little too cute there on the punt return. Sometimes they forget Paramount holding on to that football. I really do believe most of the return guys think to themselves, when I get the ball, I'm going to make the play that's going to change the game. Break it. I'm going to break it. And you love that they have that attitude, but your point is so well taken. What do you have to do? First and foremost, hold on to it. Take care of the football. That's all he needed to do. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Hey. Hey, up. Here we go. From the gun, Jackson. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Now let's go! Blue Liner! Blue Liner! There's Jackson on third and long. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13 to 6. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high.
Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. To return, it's Peppers. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Let's go. Three, Final three. play of the half, Mayfield. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with a pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. That's complete over the middle to Callaway. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. And off comes to Chubb, and he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Here we go now. Three, 19. Second down, Mayfield. He's going to look deep down the field. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. And they'll run it here. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him three on the play, and they're going to have a third down. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get him much at all. No, not at all. And that leaves him with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. 
Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. The Ravens on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third Let's and go. nine. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway. But when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. That'll be a 50-yard punt with eight on the return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. A throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and 10. Flushed out right. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. The Browns on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. Right, this is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He's got an open man. He completes it to Callaway. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down, spectacular catch turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Let's go! Blue Mayfield now on second down. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. Now let's go! Blue Niner! Mayfield looks to throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Hank's almost going to get in the QB 1-0 when he gets to the sideline. Already thrown an interception. That one should have been picked. Look, let's just be honest about it. That would be the second person in his ear because he's hearing it in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like you said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. And his kick is indeed good. And that one makes this a 10-point game at 16-6. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. More now on the return. 
Then he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a play fake here on first down. And this one is incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And that'll bring up second down. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Again on second and ten, it's Jackson. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Now it's Jackson. And he's got Sneed. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. That's going to set him back five yards. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Jackson throwing once more to the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Only two yards on the completion at second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Three yards is the pickup, but it leaves them still needing 11 here on third down. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. Third down, Jackson. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Uh, 
After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. All right, here we go. Boom, landing. A second down throw for Mayfield. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. This defense figured out something in the locker room. That's two third-quarter picks now. And you just wonder, did he get too comfortable in the locker room himself? His team has the lead. Take care of the football. He's putting him in jeopardy. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Joe Schobert. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. A run for Nick Chubb. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. We got three, three Second down, and three one, down. and people want to run the football. Three, this is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. First down, Mayfield. Being chased out left. Got some real estate inside the 30. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. And another example of why Baker Mayfield went number one in the draft. His ability to confound defensive coordinators. They played him for the pass. They covered it well. He takes off with his legs and scrambles for a big gain. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. From the red zone now, Mayfield. Screen play, Johnson. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Duke Johnson, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Browns add six to their lead. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, wherever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. Know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, 
that's the result you end up with. Hurry up, here we go. Green, three. Now Jackson on second down. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. If you're running out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. On third down, it's Edwards. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Green, 39, green. On second down, Jackson. Flush to his right. And the ball is knocked out. But it looked like a Raven was able to get in there, and they will indeed keep the possession. On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. On third down, Jackson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have right, discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver's crossing from your... And he lost it. I think the Browns got it. They did. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, down this big in the fourth yeah, say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. And he will get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in Newport, this is by Fima Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Terrell Suggs in on the tackle. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Browns on third down. They've been really good, converting seven of their ten tries. This will be third and five. All right, here we go. Chubb on the counter. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's Britton Colquitt now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. Here's Jones. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And last time the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they thought they were in striking distance. 
looking to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call <laughs> it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on him. Really well done. On second down, here's Jackson. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. The Ravens on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This time, it's third and three. Here's Jackson to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Here we go now. 319. Here we go. It's Jackson on fourth down. He finds Crabtree for the completion. And he's got this down to the 35. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Let's go! On first and 10, it's Jackson. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Here we go now. Blue lining. Blue lining. Second and 10. Here's Jackson again. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Hurry up, here we go. 319. Now Jackson to throw on third down. Muscles by at the 25. He's got the hook up to John Brown on the right side. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. And he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will close the gap down to 14. So he remains perfect. Three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is. And as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Now, the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh, God, we got to move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. They go play action here on first down. Going up top. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. 
And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again, second and 10 from the 25. On the ground, it's Chubb. Who with a juke? And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like you know his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds. And then the last says, oh no, I better, I better get down. And he ended up doing the right thing. But at that point, maybe close to letting it slip away. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. On first and 10, Mayfield over the middle. It's incomplete. David Njoku was the intended receiver. And it's second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. All right, here we go. Chubb. No, bottled up. It's out, it's loose. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Now let's go. Third and long for Mayfield. And they're waving pressure too much. Down he goes. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Jones on the return. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 31-yard line. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Dancing to his left. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. A rookie QB struggling gets thrown down to the ground there. But, you know, maybe this game, it's not over yet, but maybe this game can be a learning experience for him. So many different things that he has to pick up on. When, does, when to go ahead and flush from the pocket and run. When to get rid of the football and not take the sack. When to just go ahead and go down early and make sure you don't make sure you don't fumble the football. So many things that he has to learn. This game starts the process. Over the middle here to Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards on the play. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. But they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Montgomery. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Call it a gain of three. And it'll be second down. But it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. 
Looking to throw on second down. Jackson. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. Now it brings up third down. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Three down, three down. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Jackson will throw again. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. Throwing now. Jackson on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. And now it's second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Jackson now on second and 10. And that's incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and 10. Again, Jackson. His throw caught at about the five. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. To throw again is Jackson. And this is caught out for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. A little less than 90 seconds to go. This will be an onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. And now looking at the clock here, they do have two timeouts, but even if they force a three and out, they're going to have very little time remaining. So that means they've got to be aggressive and find a way to knock the ball free. They've got to come up with it because they can't just rely, as you noted, on using their timeouts and getting the ball back. They might not have any time to mount an attack, even if they do play it that way. Get the football. That's their mantra. Let's go. So instead of running, Mayfield's going to throw it here. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. He is a difference maker. 
Hager at the linebacker position. He had a pick six last year, remember it, but it's different for those guys, isn't it, than a corner or a safety? It certainly is because sometimes they're pattern reading, seeing what the receivers are doing. Sometimes they're spot dropping, just getting to a place on the field and finding the quarterback and going to the ball. But remember this, these linebackers, at one time in their life, a lot of them were running backs, and they love having the ball back in their hands and making big moves towards the end zone. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle. Kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. All right, here we go. Mayfield to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Mayfield. Buying time to his left. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Now Mayfield. Dumping it off for Johnson. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. Carry it's Chubb, and not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. set up third down. All right, my man, this is now where it's risk-reward because on defense, you've got to crowd the line of scrimmage. You've got to get in all the gaps, get up tight on everyone, and try and force the field goal attempt here. You can't let them break one big, but you know something when you crowd the line of scrimmage, if they do pop one, it's going to go a Yeah, I was going to say, could take it to the house, but the magnitude of this possible upcoming field goal, every yard counts. So this is certainly a tough test here in the early career of the rookie kicker. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left.
So this is certainly a tough test here in the early career of the rookie kicker. Two seconds on the clock, this for the win. And this one is right through. And the Browns are going to win the football game. Well, Charles, we saw a comeback bid fall just a little short, but give them credit. They were able to hold on, withstand that comeback, and ultimately win it by the slim margin. And bottom line, when it's all said and done, they don't ask you how much you won by. They just want to know, did you win? And that they did. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Baltimore, so long, everybody.